Hi guys and welcome to another video. In today's video lesson, we're going to be looking at sketching cubic functions, calculus. Right, so let's get straight into it. Uh, the question that we have here is f of x equals to minus x cubed plus 4x squared plus 11x minus 30. It says neatly draw the graph of f on the graph paper given in annex b, clearly indicate all the intercepts of the axis and the coordinates of the turning points. First thing that you will take note of this the standard form of cubic function is ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. You can see that a is negative, so if a is less than zero, therefore now you're going to get a decreasing function. So it starts off by going down, so that's going to be minus plus and then minus. So you can see there you're going to get your first turning point is going to be there minimum and then you're going to get a maximum there right so it says neatly draw the graph of f alternatively you know you can just get a graph that that just goes down like that okay so uh, basically for a decreasing function remember that you must have a tangent with a negative gradient here uh, to this particular curve so let's just see if we can solve this very quickly so the first thing that you ought to do here is they want the turning points and the intercepts so for 2.1 Let's just get straight there into it. So for 2.1, remember now for your x intercept, y equals to 0. So 0 equals 2. There, minus x cubed plus 4x squared. So that minus x cubed plus 4x squared plus 11x minus 30. So that'll be plus 11x minus 30. 30 right plus 11x minus 30 so you can see now that this will be your y intercept because if you make now x equals to 0 you'll only be left with minus 30 right so to find the x intercepts now that's the little bit of a tricky part but then we generally use our calculators here right or right we can factorize by inspection as well but let's just check this pull out the old calculator there and let's see if we can do this quickly so what we got here okay so minus x cubed you won't be able to see the whole calculator but i'll show you just now okay so what you're going to do is now you want here to get this equation here which is five right so you're going to press five then you're going to press four option four there right uh, and then see your a value there you see what's that minus one then b value is plus four c is 11 and then c is minus 30. So I'm going to put all those values in as it is. Minus 1 equals to, right? You all know the drill. 4 equals to, 11 equals to, and then minus 30 equals equals. So then I'm getting an x-intercept here at, you can see now, right? I need to make this calculator smaller. But anyway, so you get um, 5 there. x2 is 5. And let's see now what we got. And then x3 is what's that two right okay so let's write that down okay, so let me see if i can Right, so let's do that again um so x1 is you're going to get minus 3 x equals to minus 3 x equals to minus 3 x equals to we get three x intercepts remember the cubic function you can have at most at most three x intercepts right that's like the maximum number now then you're going to get five there these are roots now x roots are where uh, the function is going to cut the x-axis right and then this up here now. so next one you got is two right two so x equals two x equals to two so now you can get your factors see once you get your roots you can get your factors x plus three just change the sign there see minus three becomes plus three x minus five and then x minus two right so from there don't forget you got to make x uh, y equals to zero to solve for your x intercepts number one right so they'll give you a mark here for this factors and then a mark over here for the roots very important 
and that's your x intercept and then you can write over here below that your y intercept if you make x equals to zero you can just write over there that that will be zero and minus the t right you take it straight from there okay learners now we want the turning points so the turning points now remember for turning points you have to find the derivative of the function and equate it to zero so for two points uh, still there this one remember that for your turning points remember now you're going to say f primed x equals to zero now when you find the derivative remember derivative what's what's derivative of a function remember dy dx same thing equals to zero so how do you get f primed x remember now that if you have f of x equals to k x to the n then f primed x equals to see this n here multiply this k so it's k n x and then you must subtract one from the power n minus one okay so an example now will be see this function here you got see here minus x cubed so what you're going to do say three times the coefficient is minus one so it'll be minus three and then subtract one from this so it'll be minus three x minus three x squared that's the derivative that's the first part of it now. right so it'll be minus three x squared Okay, why, how you got that? You say three times, three times, minus one is minus three and then subtract one from there. Let's do this one. Two times plus four is plus eight and then subtract one there. Two minus one is one. So it'll be plus eight x, plus eight x, plus eight x, and then what else there? Carry on there. This one, there's, don't forget there's a one there. One times plus 11 is plus 11 and subtract one there. One minus one is zero, x to the zero is one. So the x just disappears if it's x, right? You get x there. So it's plus 11. And then remember the derivative of a constant is zero. You should know that. So it's plus 11 equals to zero. Plus, plus 11 equals to zero. Right, we're going to repeat the process now. Remember now that we said the derivative equals to zero. Now you're going to solve for x, okay? So we need to get calculator again, mode there, equation, which is five. Now we're we solving a quadratic equation there. Right, quadratic equation. So we're gonna pick the three. Right, so you press three there. Right, and then that's a now is what? That's minus three, eight, and eleven. So put minus three equals to eight equals to and eleven equals equals. So what you get it? Eleven over three. X one is eleven over three. So x equals to eleven over three. X equals to Press equal to again let's see what we get as i said this calculator is gone so big i need to make it smaller x2 equals to minus one i'll do that minus one but i already started this video now so let me finish it so 3x minus 11 equals to zero wait hold on now what's this three times x is 3x and then minus 11 right get your factors now and then x minus x equals to minus one so you're going to get x plus one equals to zero see the factors are important you're getting marks for all that okay so make sure that you understand so your turning points now these are the x values of your turning points remember now that to get the y value you must substitute in the original equation the only way you can get the uh the y value is to substitute in the original equation you can never ever get it if you substitute that derivative now so there's my original equation here okay you can go right to the top too there is the original equation here, f of x. Right, so to find the y value now, you're going to substitute inside there. So let's do that. What you got here? 11 over 3 is the first one, right? So y equals 2, and then so drop two turning points. So 11 over 3, let's substitute here. Calculator again. Let's put 11 over 3. So you're going to get here. Let's see what we're going to get. Mode, go back to 1 there minus x cubed so let's put that in minus cubed there plus 4x plus 4x squared plus 11x plus 11x minus 30 minus 30 so i left it blank over here so you can see what i'm doing so wherever you see that function i just left x substitution remember it's very important now huh? 11 over 3 we said huh? Right, so you're gonna put 11 over 3 all over there now, right? 
11 over 3 11 over 3 11 over 3 again equals to 400 400 over 27 so the y value there is 400 over 27 right so here you're going to get y equals to 400 over 27 right then now you put minus one all over there the x value is there minus one right remember now what we're doing so we're putting minus one why see you already got that one there so that one coordinate will be 11 over 3 and 400 over 27 this one will be minus one let's go get the y value now y value is going to be minus one there right minus one again right so you put minus one everywhere see what you get getting minus 36 so minus 36 so those are your two turning points okay so that's like a seven mark question for all of this information here so now you can draw the graph right it's saying draw a neat sketch of this particular graph okay showing everything so 2.1 we don't have the annex here but it doesn't matter right we can make our own uh, based on what we have here let's see if we can do that very quickly let's try and do this quickly there right okay so that's the y-axis that's the x-axis there so let's put all the values in what's your x-intercepts minus 3 5 and Two. Right. So let's just say minus three, right? And then you're gonna get uh, what's that? Two and five. So I'm just gonna say two. I'm estimating, here, right? It's not gonna be hundred percent perfect. Five, right? Minus so minus three, two and five, and then I know this function is a decreasing function. Now let's go put. Uh, the turning points 11 over 3 that's the x value 11 over 3 and 400 over 27 what's 11 over 3 right let's go put 11 over 3 in the calculator 11 over 3 is see 3.67 3, so let's call it 3.7 so 3.7 will be like somewhere here right that's gonna be one turning point let's make a broken line there so 3.7 will be there and what's 400 over 27 let's go put that in the calculator now so it'll be 400 over 27 that will be 14.8 right 14.8 let's make 14.8 somewhere there up here somewhere. right let's make it there right so that will be 11 over 3 and 400 over 27 that will be one turning point there and then minus 1 and minus 36 minus 1 let's say somewhere here the minus 1 all the way down here let's say minus 36 is somewhere there right so minus 1 and minus 36 right so this function remember is a decreasing function okay remember I told you at the beginning if a is less than 0 it's going to decrease right so let's go and draw this function now okay so that means it's going to come down like this here See like this it's going to turn there and then the y-intercept is going to be somewhere here minus 30. Right, so let's see there there right okay so that's our graph minus 30 will be there right as long as you got all these intercepts and the turning points and things like that remember it's just a sketch right and I'm no artist so that should do it that will be the graph now you look at that 
Now they want to determine the first derivative of f and call it g. So the first derivative, we kind of did it already. Here's it over here. Well, to find the turning points, you had to find the first derivative, right? So they want to, they want us now just to call it g of x. So call it g. So we just say 2.2. 2.2 g of x equals to, um, just copy that thing down, minus 3x squared plus 8x plus 11, minus 3x squared, so minus 3x squared, uh, what you going to get, minus 3x squared plus 8x plus 11, plus 8x plus 11, plus 8x plus 11, that's the first derivative now, remember the first derivative of a cubic function gives us a quadratic function, parabola, right? And then the, the derivative of a parabola gives us a straight line function. Now, we've done that. So 2.3, it says here, draw the graph of G on the same system of axes. Clearly indicate the intercepts of the axis and the coordinates of the turning points. Okay. So there you go now. Uh, so they want us to sketch this graph, sketch this particular parabola here. Okay. So now, same story. We have to get the x-intercept, y-intercept, right? You know that this function here is going to have a max, uh, right, a maximum uh, value. So you know you learned it. Sad face. So it's going to look like that. Maximum value there. Okay. Remember that's going to be the y-intercept there, right? So the first thing that you can do now is find the intercepts. X-intercept make y equals to zero. That'll be zero equals to minus three x squared plus eight x plus eleven. And then you can now factorize this thing here. Okay, so let's use our calculator again and factorize sharp. So you get what's this minus 3x squared. So let's get this equation there. Uh, what's that? 3, right? Okay, so it's going to be minus 3 equals to 8 equals to 11. So we're going to get 11 over 3x equals to 11 over 3 or x equals to minus one right minus one so that will be right so they want you to find out something here yeah? 3x minus 11 x plus one what do you notice see already you can see it you'll be able to conclude see the x intercepts of your parabola is will will be the same as the x uh, the x values of your turning point your cubic function same thing okay and then over here now the y intercept there is going to be 11 so let's get the y-intercept. For the y-intercept, we'll just say y-intercept make x equals to 0. That will be 0 and positive 11. 0 and 11. Now, the turning point. How you get the turning point? The turning point of the parabola will be, you can do two ways. x equals to minus b over 2a minus b over 2a will be minus 8 so that's minus the b value what's the b value there's a b value here there's an a value there right over 2 times minus 3 over 2 times minus 3 so you get minus 8 over minus 6 so that's 4 over 3 4 over 3 or the other way in which you can do it is you can take your two x intercepts right you take your two x intercepts add them and divide by two okay let's do that right, so that'll be minus eight over minus six equals to four over three right so that'll be your turning point there or you can say tp or axis of symmetry axis of symmetry normally called x right x1 plus x2 over 2 so 11 over 3 plus minus 1 over 2 so that will be 11 over 3 minus plus minus 1 over 2 let's see what we get so we get 11 over 3 minus 1 plus minus 1 is minus 1 
7 over 3 minus 1 all over 2 equals to see 4 over 3 right same thing 4 over 3 now remember now to get the y value you have to substitute into the original equation so y value will be so the original equation is this one here now g of x right so now you need to put 4 over 3 wherever you got x you need to substitute right so let's do that that's the original equation for the parabola okay so what you're going to get here minus 3 then you're going to get 4 over 3 squared plus 8 times 4 over 3, 4 over 3, plus 11, plus 11, equals to 49 over 3, so 49 over 3, 49 over 3, so therefore the, the turning point is going to be 4 over 3 and 49 over 3, let's go sketch this graph, so now what they're saying is now they want us to sketch the graph. So we'll use a different color this time, right? We said what we're going to do is let's get a different color there. So that means we'll have one x intercept there. We'll have one x intercept there, right? And then the turning point is what's this? Four over three and forty-nine over three, right? So remember now, four over three is what? Four over three is. 1.3 so 1.3 will be uh, say 1.3 is somewhere here right call it there and then uh, 49 over 3 what's 49 over 3 49 over 3 equals to so that will be what 16.3 right so remember now we was 16.3 where 16.3 now okay 16.3 will be somewhere here but what we did we said 400 over 27 now what's going to be above or below 400 over 27 is what that was 14 okay so it's going to be above that right so it'll be somewhere there okay right okay so now i just going to extend this line there that right okay so let's see now right so it should look something like this right and what that y intercept is going to be that y intercept is going to be 11 right so it'll be somewhere here 11 okay let's just rub this one just y out here put it more on top yeah right okay so anyway this is what we get again. Right, there's label is there. So what we set now. The turning point is 4 over 3 and 49 over 3. So that's 4 over 3 and 49 over 3. And then these x values of your turning points, we already say 11 over 3 and minus 1. So there's each 11 over 3 and then minus 1 there. Okay, that should do it. What else they want us to do here in this question? Right. Now they're saying determine the second derivative and call it h, then sketch the graph of h on the same system of axes. Clearly indicate the intercepts with the axis. So now going to get a straight line now right so 2.4 you want the second derivative so the second derivative is going to be right so this one of here is your first derivative so the second derivative they, they said call it h huh? right so what you should have said see that f primed x equals to g of x right and then come here and then now we got 2.4 f double prime x is going to equal to h of x f double prime x is going to equal to h of x right they said call it h 
or the other way around 2.4 so f double prime the second derivative is going to be h of x therefore h of x is equal to so second derivative now so you're just going to find the derivative of your <coughs> first derivative so it's going to be 2 times minus 3 is minus 6x don't forget subtract 1 there so minus 6x and plus 8 see 1 times plus 8 is plus 8 subtract 1 so you're going to get plus 8 derivative of a constant don't forget is 0 so you're going to get plus 8 right plus 8 Right, so that's your second derivative, okay? But don't forget, if you equate the second derivative to zero, you'll get your point of inflection. Point of inflection is where your concavity changes, okay? From concave up to concave down, vice versa. Now, where are we? Right, so this, now they want us to sketch this thing. All right, so let's sketch it. It's a straight line graph. So in order to sketch this graph now, all right, if you make here, if your x-intercept, Remember x-intercept, you make y equals to 0. So minus 6x plus 8. 6x equals to 8. So x equals to 8 over 6, which is 4 over 3. So x-intercept is 4 over 3. Right? See, your x-intercept now is 4 over 3. So it's right there, 4 over 3, which is the turning point of your your first derivative okay in fact we should rather make that into a different color too right four over three so let's make that one green right so four over three is there okay and your y-intercept is going to be eight positive eight y-intercept make x equals to zero and that's going to be zero and positive eight so zero and eight Okay, so we're going to get 0 there and then 8 should be somewhere around here. Right, let's make it there. So we're going to make it in green. 0 and 8, let's call it there, right? So we just want to sketch this graph now. Draw the straight line. And as you can see, it's got a negative gradient there. Okay. Right, anyway. So those are our three graphs so this one here will be right, this graph here is f of x so this one is actually f the red one is g and then the green one is h right so what do we now can see over here? What do you notice about the x-intercepts of the quadratic function and the x coordinates of the turning points of the cubic function? They are the same. We already mentioned that. The inflection point can be determined by first solving for f double prime x equals to zero. It can also be determined by calculating the midpoint of the turning points of the cubic graph. Hence determine the inflection point of f. Okay, the inflection point of f will be so if you take your second derivative and equate to zero so we already did that second derivative is this one over here right which is minus 6x plus 8 equals to zero so we can do it here so it'll be minus 6x plus 8 equals to zero minus 6x equals to minus 8 therefore x equals to 4 over 3 or oh, you can take the x values of our turning point and x values of our turning point. See, that's 4 over 3 there. And we can now add them, divide by 2, and then we'll get our point of inflection. Okay, so we can do that as well. Right? So this is the inflection point of F. Inflection point. Inflection point can be determined by first solving that and equating it to 0 can also be determined by calculating the midpoint of the turning points of the cubic graph, which we did already. So that's basically, right? So if you look at it now, so actually now the, the axis of symmetry or the x value of the turning point of your second derivative is equal to your point of inflection of the cubic graph, right? So what do you notice about the axis of symmetry of G, the x-intercept of H, 
and the x coordinate of the point of inflection of f okay they are the same and that's about it they are all the same point okay so the axis of symmetry of g if you go back and you look at the axis of symmetry of g there's it here it's four over three right and if you look at the x intercept of h it's four over three and if you look at the x coordinate of the point of inflection of f it is four over three there's it there four over three all right guys if you haven't subscribed already don't forget to subscribe to jl maths like my facebook page justin lazarus mathematics you can watch all videos in order of the work schedule on jlmaths.com and i'll catch you in the next video